So, uh, Melinda, welcome to the Pilgrim on the 405. Now, you know, I have a lot of clients who, in their leadership team, they struggle because for some reason or another, they get triggered. They, they build a lot of stress. It, it changes their whole way of communicating, but you can help them with that, right? Yes. You know, what happens is we still have this old hardware <laughs> that we've had for 200,000 years. It hasn't changed a lot, but the times are changing dramatically. So much change, so much innovation, so much new technology, so many things we need to respond to uh, in a short period of time now that we weren't designed for. This old hardware right here wasn't designed for. And so we have some new software, we can add to that, that helps us realize when we're in some of those primitive responses where we perceive that there is a danger or a threat and we don't need to have the same physiology responding as if it was a saber-toothed tiger or a dinosaur but that's what happens we perceive decisions uh, deadlines change as a threat our old nervous system does and so with this update we can start to recognize that sooner and be more resilient to stress so that we can actually change the stress response in the moment. We don't have to wait till we get home to go exercise or do something else to relieve stress, but instead in the moment we can shift it or we can prepare before a challenge so that we won't go there. And that saves a lot of energy and relationships and money. Well, it seems to me that what happens is it, it, when we, something triggers us. It either, it either uh, reminds us of an old trauma, an old event, something that we didn't like, mm -hmm. or there's something that we're afraid of, and it triggers isn't it, it, our limbic system, isn't it? That amygdala there, and just begins to generate a fight or flight or hide response? Exactly, our amygdala's job, it's our emotional memory center, and its job is to compare everything that's happening now to what's happened in the past. So even if we have a new situation, we can bring our old response to it, and we can actually learn to shift that response. Right, and I mean, just because it looks like, smells like, sounds like, feels like something in the past, does not mean that it's going to have the same results. Exactly, and these techniques help bring us right here to present time and opens up the possibility for a different outcome. And now, now in, in that, that does, does, is that where the prefrontal cortex comes in, this whole ability to plan, to make decisions, to make other choices? Absolutely. What happens is when we are stressed, it's been scientifically proven that we have what's called cortical inhibition. That means that there is a place that from our our heart rate variability in our nervous system that goes up and either goes to our amygdala, but it also goes to our higher thinking brain or our cortex. And if we are having a stress response, it actually inhibits by affecting the thalamus, it inhibits the ability to have access to that higher cortical thinking. So then we make more errors. We are not even as physically coordinated. We make poor choices and we react which is really helpful when we're trying to get out of the way of a saber-toothed tiger but not very helpful in business or at home either well, I, I remember the story but i remember the story about my dad when when his father died he was so stressed at that moment that he couldn't even get the key into the car to turn it on to drive exactly right yeah it, now this, 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 so many people live with this kind of stress all the time, and they just think either this is the way it is, or they blame it on somebody else, right? That's so true, and the sneaky thing about stress is, is that we adapt to stress. So the stress can be increasing, and we don't notice it, almost like, you know, like a, a frog in, in water, and they're going to boil it to make you know, frog legs, the frog doesn't know quite when to jump out until maybe it's too late and then it can't. Mm -hmm. so we're like that. We don't notice stress because 
it happens, it builds up slowly. Mm -hmm. We also think of stress as being outside circumstances, as you said. We also, um, once we're cortically inhibited, as we talked about, mm -hmm. it's harder to recognize and have that um, external perception and awareness. And so, so we don't notice until we've been making mistakes or we say something we regret or we have a health challenge or a break in relationships because we're stressed out. And when we're stressed out, our response, our survival response is all about us. How am I going to come out right now? And that does not build teamwork, mm -hmm. uh, cooperation, synergy, um or rapport and that has you know devastating effects in business and in our personal lives well it's all it's almost to me it seems like it's almost like somebody stepped on my oxygen tube <laughs> yes. right yes to go brain dead exactly. right and and and, so, and and so i have to i project it out that they're causing that and then i'm going to change the outside circumstances rather than change myself. Right. But I really can't change myself by changing the outside circumstances. Right. Right. It's an inside job. Yeah, it's an inside job. Right. 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 So now, what is it that you can share with people that will help them? I mean, we can talk about the concept, the concept of it's an inside job. It has to do with how my brain is functioning at this particular point in time. Mm -hmm. Now, you have tools that can help people deal with that. Is that right? Absolutely. Because there's proven evidence that there is a relationship between how our our breath our focus our uh, attention can affect us physiologically and i i can go into the science if you want because we even teach this to the, the system to hospitals like big hospitals that you'd recognize mm -hmm. uh, and they don't question it they go yep that's true <laughs> But um, physiologically, we can learn to put our attention and use those techniques so that it actually affects our nervous system and sends a new message up so that we aren't in the survival mode. And from that place, that facilitates our cortical um, access and function so that we can think more clearly. We can make better decisions. And it also connects more of our intuitive, creative uh, aspects of ourselves in with this higher thinking so we can come up with new solutions. And it's also a perspective that is very um, like care for the whole, like the bigger picture. So in an organization, that provides a perspective that will be good for the entire organization to help it thrive. And now this Dealing with stress, I mean, one way that I've heard of people dealing with stress has to do with meditation. And, and that can be a long time uh, to get to the place where I'm not as stressed as I used to be because I meditate for hours, of days on end, and things like that. But that's not what you're talking about, is it? No. You know, those are, um, there are a lot of stress, de-stressing you know, or to, to work with accumulated stress. Mm -hmm. Our focus is to give resources and techniques in the moment. And it's, we don't have to stop. We don't have to go to our meditation cushion or our yoga mat or wait till we get to go exercise or go home, have a drink or whatever it is we do to deal with stress. Mm -hmm. This is about preventing stress from building up and instead handling it in the moment and no one even has to know that you're doing it. Can you, yeah. well, what, what would you share with people who, I have many clients who find that they're stressed. Mm -hmm. And at first they're asking me to change the world around them. How do I get them to do what I want them to do? How do I change the people I'm working with? Yeah. And when they come to understand that it's, it's really 
an inside job, uh, they, they sometimes ask for tools. What kind of tools can you give them? Well, I'm, I like to use the HeartMath system just because of its efficacy and its, its proven track record. And those tools are a literally a shift in awareness and focus. Um, I could even, we could even do an example right now if you want to try that sure. right now. Sure. sure. So, and this is just a basic tool and there are more that build on it. And it, it's also with, it takes practice to build um, the, re the result. It isn't, uh, knowing about it isn't as, as uh, effective as doing it and mm -hmm. actually changing our neural pathways by doing it. So, Let's just take a moment then and, and like a first step with this quick coherence technique, the first step is just to shift your focus to the area around the center of your chest there. Around my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. What that does is it naturally disengages these like a, a looping thought patterns, stress thought patterns. So we disengage our focus and put our focus in the center of our chest. Now, you don't have to put your hand there, but for this experiment, just to play with this the first time, we can, to just notice, are you looking down at your heart? Is there like a mental perspective where we're looking down? Mm -hmm. Let's bring the awareness down so that it's hard to focus, so you can actually feel really present or focused right there. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't come easy, a little trick is, First, to focus on, let's say, your right big toe. <laughs> you can wiggle your right big toe. Okay, your focus is there. Now, that brings you out of your head. <laughs> now, just going and focusing in the area around the heart, center of your chest. And just breathing as you do that, breathing in and out of your heart area. Maybe about five seconds in and five seconds out. And then connect with anything that you appreciate or have gratitude for, care for. It could be a person, a place, a thing, a pet. And connect with the actual quality, the feeling quality of appreciating it, of feeling grateful for it. Could be a beautiful sunset, anything that sort of makes your heart smile. <laughs> and just as you're breathing, let yourself experience that. If you want, you can even imagine you're breathing that in and out of your heart. And just notice how that feels. Anything you experience doing that? Oh, it is absolutely calming. Yeah. And very delightful. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, we mentioned the word heart and that sounds like, a, like that sissy stuff, but like this is taught to the U.S. military. Mm. and to police <laughs> and first responders mm -hmm. and correctional officers because it helps bring situational awareness and presence. The focus in the heart just changes our physiology and starts sending a new message from the 40,000 neurons, that those are, that's brain tissue, mm. 40,000 neurons that are in the back of the heart that are communicating to the brain all the time, to the amygdala, little pacemaker cells. They're talking to each other. There's an actual connection. And they're telling the amygdala, we're good. We're or good. stress, <laughs> emergency, saber tooth tiger, let's try to find it. Maybe it's those outside circumstances. <laughs> right. Maybe right. it's them. <laughs> right. Well, if somebody wanted to learn more about this, what could they do? They could take a resilience training. 
mm -hmm. um, that I offer. You can get resilience coaching. Um, and, and I offer both of those through uh, resilienceinsights.com. Resilienceinsights.com. Spell that for us. Resilience. Um, R E S. <laughs> E L I N C E and then uh -huh. insights. Resilienceinsights.com. Mm -hmm. Good. And and uh, now you mentioned heart math. Uh, is this a heart math technique that you're teaching? It is. It's called the Resilience Advantage. Uh, re it's, a, it's a heart math training, and it can be broken into modules and either be a few hours or a full day. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we go into corporations, sometimes we even, especially hospitals, we do a second day. And the reason they do that is because it reduces medical errors. It reduces um, employee turnover. It reduces medical costs. Uh, efficiency, effectiveness, morale, and the patients even report feeling more cared for when the staff is heart math trained. Wow. These are, this is real stuff. It's not just theoretical. Mm -hmm. Proven. Yeah. So what are the results again of uh, having resilience training or heart math using the heart math tools? Well, let me let me just go ahead. I can tell you that uh, uh, even some statistics. So like in an in a study of over 11,500 people that learned the heart math system, uh, they did some statistics before and six to nine weeks after they've had their heart math training. And they found that there was 24% improvement in ability to focus, 30% yeah. improvement in sleep. 38% improvement in calmness, 46% drop in fatigue, and 56% drop in depression. Wow. Significant. And that's after the training. It's not just the, that day or the next, you know. I mean, that's when it's been practiced. So really what the intentions of the training are to improve teamwork and uh, the workplace environment. You know, attitude and cooperation and synergy in the workplace environment. Um, as I said, to reduce healthcare costs uh, and to really leverage the ability to think clearly under pressure and to come up with like big picture solutions that actually contribute to the whole, to the whole organization. Um, and it diminish, diminishes a lot of the symptoms of stress-related uh, you know, problems like fatigue and overwhelm, sleep, things like that. So, so along with the mission that I have, which is to improve the quality of life of business people in Orange County, mm -hmm. this would be a tool that would be very effective for them. Yes. Good. Well, uh, resilienceinsights.com? Yes. That, that's where they go? Yeah. What would you, what would you say to people if you had a, a, a megaphone and you could speak to business owners in Orange County, what would you say? That we are in a stress epidemic, that the speed of change is increasing exponentially and that if we don't prepare ourselves and our teams to respond to that and stay on track and keep up with the change without letting it deplete us so that we can actually increase our resilience which is the capacity to adapt to and respond to uh, stress Mm -hmm. And the capacity is the key word because it's like, do we want to go with a little battery to work or into situations or new projects or new innovations, or do we want to have a big battery that we can draw on? Right. That's what we mean to talk about capacity. So this is a resilience building tool so that we have that to draw on as we're making decisions and, and implementing them and staying current with the marketplace. Mm -hmm. and what we need to do to respond to that.
And this would be good for the whole team to be involved with. Absolutely, because an organization that is practicing this, um, it creates others, let's say, that come to our company will start to even feel the difference. Mm. There are studies that show that when we are in a state of uh, heart rate coherence, heart brain coherence, like we just mm -hmm. talked about, when we're in that state, that it can be perceived measured even three feet away from our body we know it goes a lot further mm -hmm. we can measure that and that scientists can actually tap into the frequency of our electromagnetic field because this is an electric you know so we do ekg they're looking at the electric right pulse right right and they can do with a, a a measurement of our electromagnetic field three feet away from the body mm. i'll do it one inch away from the brain, by the way, mm. three feet away from the body, and can actually interpret what that person was experiencing with like 80% accuracy as to whether they were stressed, whether they were um, happy, uh, fulfilled, satisfied, and you can tell that. Mm. So imagine when people are working together and those electromagnetic fields are, are influencing each other. Mm. Well, we are going to talk more. Uh, I want to get back to you, but I also want to share this with business owners in Orange County and let them begin to work on their stress so that in doing this, we can help business owners in Orange County get what they want from their business. Beautiful. Thanks so much for being with us today, Melinda. Thank you. Uh, glad that you're uh, with us on the uh, pilgrimage with uh, Pilgrim on the 405. Thank you.